What up, guys? Kevin here. What's that famous Phil Spencer saying? When PlayStation plays, Square Enix loses? <laughs> I think that's it, right? Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, now, we got... Yesterday, I kept seeing tweets left and right praising uh, the director or producer or whatever, the head dude over Final Fantasy, just praising being able to make Final Fantasy VII Rebirth only for one console. They said it wouldn't have been successful uh, without it. Uh, these are not successful numbers. Maybe they're good numbers. Maybe they're passable numbers. But, yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's first week in Japan. This is just Japan. 262,000. That's not good. For context... Final Fantasy 16, 336,000, which again was a PS5 only with less PS5s out there. And if it seems like I'm taking a victory lap, it's because I spent the last week pe seeing people shit all over Final Fantasy 16. My runner up for game of the year would have been game of the year, but Trails into Reverie came out. Um, but look at this drop from Final Fantasy 7 Remake, 700,000, 700,000 to 262,000. Which, um, you can you can do a little bit of math. Like, well, there's probably double the amount of PS4s then, so uh, that would be more like three hundred and thirty-five thousand if you want to compare the numbers. But still, that's still like a hundred thousand less. Man, what 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 happened? Now we don't have the entire numbers, or maybe we do, and I just haven't read all the tweets yet. Um. But I saw that box sales were down 30% from the remake over in the EK. EK. Um, but it's not good. And yeah, I, I do want to take a victory lap. I saw people shitting all over Final Fantasy 16. I don't know what that game did to everybody. I wonder if I even played the same game. I'm like, man, I played such a great experience. I love Final Fantasy 16. And now that I've played Rebirth, about 10 hours into Rebirth, it makes me miss Final Fantasy 16. It makes me miss the tight structure of that game. The characters, the story it told. Now, we got to say it's a remake project. I'm still confused if we consider the... Final Fantasy VII Remake, now Rebirth, and the next game, a mainline title. I would call it a mainline remake. Um, but people were hyping this up, especially the Final Fantasy XVI haters were going, yes, this is the direction we want to go with uh, this remake project. This is the direction we want to go. This is where what I want to see all Final Fantasies uh, be from here on out. I'm over here going, no, I want every Final Fantasy game to be whatever the person who's directing or producing or whatever, I want their vision. And if their vision is the same, cool. If it's different, awesome. Awesome. Um, <laughs> now, do, do I have to rehash my issues with Rebirth? The opening chapter is just boring. Boring flashback. I hate flashbacks, especially playing them out. It's like, all right, this feels all meaningless. Cool. This could have been a cutscene. And now I'm into like a big open world area, which I, <laughs> I'm i getting ratio to death because I called it Assassin's Creed and I'm seeing other people. I think I saw Maximilian dude basically is like, oh yeah, this looks like influenced by uh, Ubisoft games. Like what's a Ubisoft game? Assassin's Creed. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying I don't like the game. I'm coming around to Rebirth, but... Um, yeah, I think Final Fantasy just has an issue here with this remake project. I think the issue is it's three games. I do think another issue is, okay, holy shit, I want to play the second game, but I got to play remake, which they do, at least digitally. If you buy Rebirth, you got to make sure you buy the right one. They will give you remake integrate for free. Make sure you buy the right version. Um, 
which is cool. I think they understood that. Like, this is a game where you definitely want to play Remake first. Though, if you want to play Rebirth first, I don't care. <laughs> as long as you enjoy the game. Um, yeah. It's, uh... Exclusivity. We got to talk about exclusivity. You know, I made that saying. Uh, when, when PlayStation plays, Square Enix loses. Seems to be the case with Forspoken and just all their games that they release um, exclusively to that console. I don't think they get enough money to justify exclusivity. I think the game feels rushed out. But yeah, this is... You know, a game gets a 90, what, 392 Metacritic score. That should have the gaming community excited. But when it's locked to a PS5, where even the people that play on PS5 are let down by the graphics, by having to play at 30 FPS, that's a downer there. Then the PC gang, they're just like, all right, I'll just wait for that to come to PC. <laughs> it'll get patched, it'll look better. And... It'll probably be cheaper. They will wait. So there's no excitement there. And then Xbox fanboys, I mean, they went ape shit yesterday because it came out that the trilogy is exclusive, like a console exclusive to PlayStation, which then got updated to actually it's not. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Then Square Enix saw these numbers and went, they called up Jim Ryan or Hiroki Totoki and said, hey, we're done with this exclusivity crap. You guys are not buying our games. You're, you guys aren't. It's not enough. Hopefully Square Enix learns a lesson here. I really do. Even if these numbers end up being good, they end up getting by, whatever. I hope they understand that. They easily missed out at least on 100,000 copies sold on Steam. Probably at least 25,000 on Xbox. That's something. At $70, that is something. And that's a player base. That's all three player bases. Uh, marketing your game, rooting for your game, showing clips of your game. But no, you just leave it to PlayStation 5 only. And it's disgusting. It's really disgusting. And I'm really angry about it because they started putting Final Fantasy games on Xbox. What, Final Fantasy 13, and from there... We started getting all the games. They went back and even gave us the old games. And then with Remake, like, no, nah, you don't get it. Rebirth, don't even think about it. Here's 14, though. Um, it's disgusting behavior. It's It makes me feel really bad for Xbox players. But then at the same time, you know, go get yourself a PlayStation if you want to play these games. Um, but yeah, so hopefully Square Enix learns. I think they... They got a new dude in charge. They got their uh, new person who seems to be a little bit more understanding of, yeah, we don't do this shit. We need people to play our games. That's the way the industry is going. If Helldivers taught us a lesson is, if that game would have launched only on PlayStation, that game would have been dead. That game would have been dead. Each platform has different audiences. Different audiences that get different just get different um experiences out of the same game whereas uh playstation they would probably get a kick out of um the storytelling in rebirth whereas the pc audience would probably get a kick out of all the mini games and gameplay and stuff and xbox fanboys would get a kick out of going hey, hey we got final fantasy <laughs> um but yeah and shout out to Final Fantasy 16. Look at you. What, 3 million sold in less than a week? People hate on you except for me. Can't wait for that game to come to PC. Oh, yeah, that game has like DLC coming out. <laughs> They'll probably quickly move on to that. But, anyways, I gotta go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Later.